Welcome everybody to another Awakening Conversation, especially at the moment we are in the global pandemic of the COVID-19 situation. So I've decided to do a series where I get experts and thought leaders to help us navigate this really difficult time in this in this global situation. So today I have Catherine Beaumont, who is a co-founder and CFO of Business Blueprint, who is a, they are a company that helps support uh, the needs and stay up to date and to grow and expand with small to medium businesses. And they also have charity work. And Catherine has also had a previous career in naturopathy, holistic, holistic healing, and she's a herbalist as well. So I got Catherine on today because um, she is particularly good at navigating working full-time in her company and having two active young boys, one of which has been homeschooled for one and a half years and the other one which has been COVID homeschooled currently. And so I uh, have been, you know, dealing with this this little um, balance for the last probably six or seven weeks now. And initially I, f- I felt like, yeah, this is, I can manage this. And then last week was just awful. So um, I had a bit of a chat to Catherine, just a personal chat to Catherine, and she just brought up some amazing points that I thought were really, really important for other parents out there who are trying to work full-time from home and school school their children. And in different parts of the world, this has been going on for months mm-hmm. now. So in Australia, it's only, it's only been a couple of months, but, you know, it, I just wanted to put this information out there. So Welcome, Catherine, to Awaken These Awakening Conversations. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for having me. Pleasure. So how do you, how do you like, when you first started schooling um, your first child, I won't use names, your first child one and a half years ago, how did you kind of start the process of homeschooling and working out the whole curriculum and still working full-time in your really busy business and all the travel that you've had to do as well? Yeah, look, that's a great question, uh, Sarah. And I think, you know, like all parents out there and people in situations like we are, you know, where you've got full-time work and whatever, it's the old sayings, give you give a busy person something to do and they'll get it done, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that's kind of the old adage. And uh, for me, it was kind of, I was at a point where it's in hindsight, it's probably something I should have embraced earlier um, with my eldest son because he has thrived in that environment. Uh, however, I didn't think I could do it, right? And I think that's what COVID's kind of done now is it's thrown us all in the deep end. And literally, I was thrown in the deep end. It was I was at a desperation point where I needed to do something for my older son. I needed to also keep my sanity um, as well and also to the sanity of the school. To. Um, so at that particular point, I did feel I was cornered, but I had support around me, support with people like yourself, Sarah, um, at the time. It was invaluable and you were pregnant at the time as well, I believe. <laughs> um, and just knowing there was people who believed in me that I could do it. And I think that was that's a very key thing. And the other thing was is to know to for me to realize I didn't necessarily have to have all the answers. Uh, it was I was going to have good days, I was going to have bad days. That's okay. I didn't have to get it right all the time. I just had to get it right most of the time. And for myself being such a high achiever, that was actually probably the challenging, the most challenging thing I had to get my head around was not necessarily educating my older son or even now educating like the COVID educating we're doing was it was getting my head right to go it's okay do the best you can and we'll get through this together and knowing when to push forward and when to pull back. Mm, Yeah I know what you mean with that whole I'm a bit of a high achiever as well and that very first Mm. week you know the boys were at home because I pulled the boys out when I just felt like it was the right time at the end of the last term and you know we were given the the kind of school calendars and you, and um you know kind of the the timetables and a bit of work in there and i was like sticking to it religiously so if yep. they'd finish their work if break time wasn't till this then i'd try and find other activities to do and it kind of worked for a little bit because mm. the boys were constantly occupied 
I think they were loving my full-time attention, but it was so full on. And I messaged one of the, you know, the teachers were checking in to see how we were going. And I was kind of telling her, you know, they've done this. And then I've given them some extra. And she just went, you are putting way too much pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So I just kind of pulled back and I realized that it, you know, when they're at school for such a long period, they're not working all the time in that. And especially when, I don't know if it was you that I was talking to or someone else after I spoke to you last weekend, but it's kind of like they're in this class and they, they, they will have mini breaks. Like Dane, yeah. what my, one of mine has mini breaks and he would definitely be stopping and distract, you know, gets distracted easily. So he'd stop and chat and because his focus is only quite small mm-hmm. and then there he's like mini breaks. And it was yeah. you that when, when I was talking to and you were saying, you know, just get him to break, you know, whereas my other one, he will just work and work and work and work. And whereas this one is like he needs a mini break. So he run now he runs downstairs and gets some water or right. goes for a run around the house and then comes back up. And I've definitely found that that's helped him instead of pushing him to keep going. Yeah. And that's just really important. I mean, you've really hit the nail on the head there. It's understanding your children and it's also understanding yourself. Mm. And I think that's really important. Um, the first thing is understanding yourself and your own capacity. <laughs> what is it I'm capable of? And, you know, like our kids, we have good days and bad days as well. Mm. So it's knowing when to push ourselves and when to pull ourselves back as well. Um, and with that, with the breaks, it's knowing, you know, you, you know, yourself as it's like, there's some days where you do, you're in the flow and you just work solid. Mm. There's other days your brain just doesn't click in the gear. Well, I know mine certainly doesn't some mm. days and I'm up and down like a little Jack in the box. And, and it's, it's interesting because if you actually think about that logically is it's the brain just actually analyzing and coping or dealing with sometimes with new ideas. So exactly what you said with one of your, your children is it's like, get him to have breaks, get him to go downstairs and get water. But also too, what I've found is sometimes also to make, give them a task where they're being helpful. So Mm -hmm. they're not only getting themselves water, but they're getting a glass of water for you or a glass Mm -hmm. of water for someone else in the family as well. Uh, you know, another good one is, is we've got them running up to the post, uh, the uh, litter box to go and get the mail and bring it back. On garbage day, it's bringing the garbage bin back, de- back down, but not just for our place, but for the neighbours as well. Oh, cool. So they're contributing. Yeah. Um, so the breaks actually are purposeful. That's a um, great idea. Yeah, and it really makes a difference. And as uh, the funny, uh, the irony of all of this is it's like the boys have actually developed bonds with our neighbours who we didn't even know before, and we've lived in this house for the last nine years. Wow. So, yeah, so it's been a really cool way to actually integrate within our local community. So that's just a offshoot. Um, but the uh, the other thing is too is it's realising you're going to have different things happen on different days. And in a normal classroom environment, and this is the thing I had to pull myself back with, um, I guess I'm really grateful that I did have a little bit of traction on the ground with Finn the 18 months prior, is that in a normal classroom environment, there's 30 kids in the class in in public schools, 30 kids, one teacher, maybe once a week for an hour or two, there might be a support teacher. But more often than not, it's 30 kids with one teacher. They've got a X amount of work to get through in a day with 30 kids. Mm -hmm. With COVID ed, we've got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six tops, you know. So as such, it's a little bit different to 30 kids (laughs) throughout the whole day. Also too, is get to know your kids what break, as you said with one of yours, you know he needs short breaks often, Mm -hmm. right? Your other child needs, is working for longer periods and probably then has longer breaks Mm. as well between. So you work out that rhythm and we've got that luxury to do that. In a normal classroom, you don't have that luxury. So what a teacher normally does in a classroom is they present the lesson, then there's they get up off the floor, they move, they relocate. So they're actually moving around and then they settle back down at their desks, take out all their pens and pencils and everything else and then do their lesson. And then after that, they then mark their lesson as a teacher reads it out, and then they go back down. So what would normally, like, could take a, even your child with the shortest ex- attention span, you know, 10 minutes to do in a classroom would take, could take up to two hours mm. with 30 kids. 
So that perspective, when I actually went, had that light bulb moment and had that perspective, it took a massive weight off my shoulders Mm -hmm, to go, I've got to do all of this, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and and that's huge. And and you don't have to get it right all the time because you can imagine a class of 30 kids, some kids get it, some kids don't get it, some kids hand it in and they've got time to spare and they can read books. Other kids don't get it done, struggle with the first question and don't even get there. So we're doing okay. So two things I just want to ask you out of that is mm-hmm. one is if you if there's a parent or two parents at home that are working and trying to school and they have more than one child, do you recommend that everyone kind of breaks together or does it like as needed or or how would you what would your advice to those parents when you when you do have more than one child and probably with different needs because they're all a bit different anyway. Absolutely. Do you kind of make it a time limit and then they get break together like they do at school or do you, how would you navigate that or how do you navigate that? Yeah, look, great, really great question. And, um, and I love how you phrased it advice as well. Cause remember advice is just based on my experience. Yes. So it's not necessarily what I do is going to be what works for everyone else. Mm. And Sarah, you've heard me say this expression. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Exactly. So, and sometimes what works one day isn't going to work another day, <laughs> um, you know, and we're all different. Not only do, do our kids have different ups and downs in their days, so do we. Mm. So based on my experience is what I've found, what works is I, is in a, in a classroom, you can do it one, two ways. If for what works for you, what you need to do with work and your kids is structuring it to all having this, all having the same breaks, that's what works for you right? Mm. And for the interesting thing is for my sister, that actually works. Um, Though saying that, she's also got two girls who are very quiet, like beautiful, beautiful, but you're perfect children, right? (laughs) I have two insane boys. (laughs) So I can't compare because comparison kills. I've just got to acknowledge mine are different. And also, too, my sister's more calm than what I am. So that's a big difference, too. So what works for my sister doesn't necessarily work for me. Mm. It might if my boys are really tired, um, but on a normal day, it doesn't. So I need to, it's for my two, I need to sort of treat them a little bit individually. Also, too, their learning um, their learning styles are very, very different as well, um, which I'm sure everyone's actually observed pretty quickly what she is spending this close proximity with mm. their kids is their learning styles are different. So what I do is it's is it's not actually for us. It's not even the same day to day. It's very different. Um, some days is, is fem- well, my eldest, he will be up and down all the time. And I've got to roll with that, but I've also got to make it proactive and call him back. If he is doing that, what I do do is I then start to set timers, mm. right? So he responds very well with that. So he My gets- auntie, who's an ex, ex um, early primary school teacher, she was talking about this with my boys the other day. She's yeah. like, get them timers, especially my, my younger of the boys, because yes. they also start to learn the concept of time. And it's exactly. like my, that one doesn't stop talking even, you know, and so it can be very disruptive for my other one. Yep. But it's it's like, you know, imagine if he could learn to not talk for 15 minutes. I'm like, he can't, he, the most he can do is 30 seconds. And she's like, that's fine. Give him a minute first. Exactly. But set exactly. the timer. And I thought that was an awesome idea. So yep. thanks for bringing that up as well. Yeah. And setting the timer too gives them control. Mm right? So, because what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to empower, um, at, like our children, mm. to be in control of their learning and their learning environment. Be- so, they can do that when they hit the workforce when they're older, mm. right? So, I look at it as not just getting through COVID or not just getting through schooling. I'm looking at setting up the as my children to be men in society. Mm. So, how can I empower them to do that? So, it is using a time is great. So, if, is my eldest is in charge of that. He goes, okay, I'll go, right, it's 10 minutes. For 10 minutes, focus on this. When the timer goes up, you've got two minutes to go and do what you like. So he, but it's not necessarily do what you like. It's either hit a ball or he goes and gets water for everybody. It is I also too, um, my office at home, I also have uh, 
is my financial concierge works alongside me in my office as well. So it's actually not just at working yeah. from home, it's it's working with a team too. So what we've actually got my eldest doing is getting coffee for us, you know. So it, it's those sort of things. Whereas my youngest doing the COVID, he doesn't necessarily need a timer. He knows I get this task done and then I have a break. Mm-hmm. I get this task done and then I have a break. And for him, his break is actually going out and jumping on the trampoline. That works better for him. So unfortunately, I'd I'd love to go, here's the answer. It's not necessarily here's the answer, but here's a smorgasbord and some possibilities that you can think of that work best with your family. Mm. Um, And it's working out also too, I think we spoke about this, is what routine works best or what rituals work best. And I'll give you an example of this because this actually just really hit me just before I got on um, with you setting the boys up uh, while we were on this conversation is, you know, is for Callan, his ritual with COVID now is of a morning. So at, at 7 or 7.30, he will actually go in and check his emails from his teacher. So he'll check on his Google Classroom what he has to achieve during the day. And then he actually writes down in a little book what subjects he's going to do first. Wow. That how just for the audience, how old is Callan? Nine. That's like how how amazing is that independent learning and what that's already teaching him instead of the parent coming in and going, these are the things you have to do. Because then you have all the the parent child fights of like you're making me do this. Yep. And so that just takes away all of that sort of stuff and gets them to Wow, that's amazing. Yep. So it gives him self accountability. Mm. I'll get to my eldest in a minute because his is a bit a little bit different. Yeah. But with Callan, um, so yeah, with my youngest is is he checks in. He knows it, he well actually this is his ritual. He knows he has his breakfast. He goes up and gets dressed, and then he comes in to get his hair done. But while he's waiting to get his hair done because he's got long hair, um, that's his fifteen to twenty minutes of reading. Mm that he has to do for school. So he actually sits on my bed doing his reading, right? Then I'll do his hair. Then while I finish getting dressed, that's when he checks his emails and works out. He writes down in his little book what subjects he's going to do first, what order he's going to do it in, and he's got his day organised. Then we go for a walk. I need a coffee. So we go down for a walk. We have a chat. That also uses up all these words. It also too gets him out of having a chat because he's my little chatterbox. So I've also had to think a little bit laterally on how do I get his little chattiness out so then he can concentrate because if I don't do that is then he'll be chatting all day. So, and I need quiet at certain periods of the day. So <laughs> we go for a half hour walk to get, but the excuse is, is I get my coffee and then we come back and then he gets stuck in into his work. Now, what's interesting is also too, so do you, you take gonna, your elder one with you on that work on that walk or is that just you and Callan? No, I'll get to you in it. I'll get okay. to Fee's That's rituals just Callan's. Yeah. That's just Callan's. So yeah. it's different rituals for different different ones. Yeah. And depending on their age, depends on how involved or not involved you yes. are in their rituals as well, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So with Callan as well, so this is a nine-year-old, he then um, comes back. Now he's learned because also too I'm encouraging them to make mistakes. I'm encouraging them to botch it up, right? Because from that, if they do, if they make the mistakes, they will learn from from them. So I'll give you a classic example. Last week, Callan didn't schedule his work the best way possible. Now I could have been on him with that. I kind of saw it wasn't going to work, and as a result, he didn't get his hand his work in on time. He didn't get it done. Now I could have got involved in that. I chose to step back. Because also, too, I'm very aware as it's like he's not going to be the only kid not handling his work, right? So, and this is his learning experience. He was devastated, devastated. So rather than buying into it, I said, what are some things we can do? How can we do it different? So from that, and I think I explained that, we spoke about this on the weekend, from that experience, he's now then setting up his days to do his computer work first then his bookwork, and then the fun stuff. 
So he then knows if the fun stuff he doesn't get done in time, it doesn't matter because that's not the stuff he has to hand in. I, I could have spent hours trying to work out which, him. Or, or even trying to work out which was the best way to do it for him. Which was a, which was the best way to do it for mm. him, nagging at him to get it done. Mm. Yeah. He builds resentment towards me. I get resentful towards him. We end up in this vicious cycle and it doesn't help anybody. So this way, he's actually failed forward. He's made a mistake. He's worked out how to solve it and he solved it. Just stay there for a sec. Look, at that's interesting that you said that. I haven't actually read this book yet, but someone gave it to me the other day. Oh, I love German Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> John, like seriously, John Maxwell is is he's one of my mentors. He's one of my gurus. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, he is absolutely he's so on the ball. But that's a little side. Um, but that's exactly what it is: is you fail forward. Mm. And by Callan actually taking that responsibility and accountability, not only for his schoolwork, but imagine how much that's going to set him up for being a man. Absolutely. Being a teenager, my my seventeen year old when he was in early primary school, maybe year three, something like that. Um, and then there was probably like a, uh, I think there was a bit of, you know, homework. Oh, you know, I don't want to do homework. You can't make me. That's that type of thing. And I just yep. went, that's fine. I'm not giving you your homework. If you don't want to do your homework, talk, talk to your teacher about it. I'm not yep. giving it to you. Doesn't worry me if you do it or not. You need to address it with your teacher. And yep. that was kind of like the end of those conversations because yeah. it's like takes me out of the equation and takes that, exactly. that hassling and, and the pushing that comes from the parent when it's it's not between the parent yeah. and the child it's if you don't want to do it speak to your teacher about it if exactly. you don't think it's fair if you don't think homework's the right thing speak to your teacher about it there's no point in arguing with me about it yeah exactly and and that's a really relevant point as well is because you in this case when we're covid educating we we aren't we aren't actually their teachers mm. we're their support people yeah and it's an interesting um, concept to get your, uh, to get your head around as well is you are there to support them. You don't they don't have to get all the information right. They don't have to present it beautifully. They don't have to do it to your standard is it's like we've got no like for um, my youngest is it's like I don't know what he does like what sort of level of work he presents in the classroom. I don't know. Hmm. So, it's up to him to learn how to navigate this as much as it is me. And this is where we spoke about the other day too, is I think for me, the easiest way for me to get my head around it is to run it as a team and run it as an office rather than run it as I'm the parent, you're the child, and we are going to run a classroom. That was going to be my next kind of question. It's like, so the the kind of parent that, the the, the parent that might be, by themselves, you know, whether their partner goes yes. back or whether they're a single parent and they've got, say, one younger, like the older children, they work a little bit more independently. But just say it's a younger child mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who is a bit like my younger of the two, yes. that he only lasts like a couple of minutes and stuff. So, you know, like how, how can that parent get their head around having to do their own full-time work and support, support yeah. that? Yeah, look, that's really another really great question. And and this also is where not all rituals suit all children. Mm. So um, I, I mentioned uh, my eldest's rituals are different to what my youngest rituals are, uh, son's rituals are. So of a morning for him, he um, he has, has his breakfast, gets dressed, but then he's also got the responsibility of walking a neighbour's dog. Oh, cool. Right. Right. So that gives him a little bit of independence. It gives him a bit of autonomy. And it also gives him a little bit of a break from us, okay? So in 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 my eldest case, of course, he's he's with me all, all pretty much all the time um, because it's like I am his mother, I am his educator. So I'm not just a COVID educator supporting him, I'm his educator. So you've also got to work out, and this is important during these times as well, how can our, like as a family unit, as a working unit, how do we also maintain sanity in those times without being in each other's pocket? Mm. So for my eldest is that is walking the neighbor's dog. I know he's safe because the neighbor's dog's a big dog and no one's going to go near him with the dog. 
it gives him time on his own. He puts his headphones in. He can listen to an audio book or more often than not he listens to music. But that's his time. He then comes back. Now, I may or may not be back from my walk yet with my youngest, but then he, he's got a, his choice then is he can get stuck into his workbooks or his online learning. And how, how old is he for, for the listeners, just so they kind of have yeah. some context? No, no, that's right. So he's 12. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, his attention span isn't what my youngest is. His mm-hmm. is very short. So this is where um, timers have come in really handy. Uh, also to understanding um, his break cycles as well. So, however, what I've done is I've worked with him for him to understand what his needs are rather than me telling it for him. And even with younger kids, this is really good because this is a lot to do with them self ma- like self-management. Mm-hmm. So he, he gradually, so sometimes it's like he might set his alarm for five minutes and then right. he's got a break. Okay. So he set up, his own timer for what he what his needs exactly. are. Okay. It didn't start that way. I'll, yeah. I'll be really honest. It did not start that way. Yeah. However, it's progressed in that way. So also too, it's about building trust. Yeah. As well. So it's it's all these undercurrent in this time, it's it's the undercurrent parenting in order for our kids to be self sufficient and for us to be redundant. Mm. You know, that juggle that we're doing here as well. So he he now sets his own timer or he'll set it by task. However, he's started to work out just simply because I've gone asking. So I've learned with him is to ask the question rather than tell him what to do. My Both of mine are like that. Yeah. So, and it's so easy, particularly when you're working and you've got deadlines and you've got people in your ear and you're trying to juggle this or you've got the banking going on and you're dealing with, you've been put on hold for 50 years and all of that going on. It's so easy to turn around and just go, just do this, just do that, just do this, just do that, all right? That's the easy path. The harder path gives you actually the ease long term, mm. right? So Especially it might- with kids that, you know, are, let's say, control away motivated. Yes. So, you know, like the ones that are quite happy with being told what to do and they do it, it's yep. fine, but the ones that the ones that aren't, it's like it, it just sets up a, a massive argument or problem, or they'll do the opposite anyway. So I find with Absolutely. my boys, they're both like that. So yeah, yeah, I ask them what they think exactly, and they come up with the solution exactly. And if they're younger, it's only giving them two choices. Yes. <laughs> so, so it's you Love don't it. don't ever ask a sort of open ended question because that can very much backfire. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, it might be a case of, do you need a break now or in five minutes? Mm. Right. So you're identifying, and and also to what I what I, the other thing I notice I do with the boys is I notice where they're at. So they st- and and this has been particularly advantageous for my eldest is going. You seem a bit frustrated with what you're doing right now. Do you need a break now? Or do you want to wait until after you're finished? So you don't wait till he's frustrated and going, ah, you know, I've finished, I can't do it. About it. You you notice before the escalation of that. Yeah. And you now, can't interrupt it just a bit. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I don't necessarily pin it all the time, but yeah. probably about 70% of the time I'll get it before it escalates. But we all know the warning signs. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like things will go, <clears throat> or or whatever, whatever it is, you know, it's a tapping of the, like that, (laughs) you know, like we've all got them. Um, So it's identifying, you seem really frustrated with that right now. Do you need a break or do you need to come back in five minutes? Or is there something I can help you with? Mm. So that way it gives, they're not cornered because I mean, particularly for these kids, it's like if you, if you go, oh, you need to do this or you need to do that, they, they put such a, they feel like I I call it the corner syndrome. They kind of feel cornered. Like you're backing me into a corner. You're telling me what to do. You're telling me that you've got no idea what's going on. So if you just go, you appear to be frustrated. Do you need a break now or in five minutes or how can I help you? Hmm. It's, I call it diffusing the bomb. And they Hmm. usually know if they take a deep breath, what they need right then and there, better than what you do. And 
both of them, but particularly my oldest has shocked me at times. He turned around and said, I'm not frustrated. He said, I'm angry, you know? And I go, well, what do you mean you're angry? He said, I'm really angry because I was able to do this yesterday and I can't do it today. Perfect. How good's that? Yeah. I wouldn't have Because you asked that. the question, right? I asked the question. So and because the question- you have been. So he's now used to actually checking in with himself and going, actually, how do I feel right now? Exactly. Exactly. So the quality of the question will determine the quality of the outcome. Yeah. So, and that's a really powerful thing. So he's now, and what I've started to notice with him now further down the track is he's starting to pull himself up. Now, does he do that all the time? He's probably does about 40% of the time. Now, as you'll see him and you'll go, he'll go, and you'll go, I'm just going to get the mail. Yeah, cool. Right. Or he'll go, interrupt himself. Or he'll go, who needs a coffee? <laughs> right. <laughs> However, what, I, what I've had to learn here as well is because it's a two way learning street. What I've had to learn as well is go, not go, no, you're doing your work, or it's, you're interrupting, or don't need a coffee, as it's kind of like, hey, yep, you need to go and get a coffee. Go, have it, you're having a break right now. Yes, I am. So it's reiterating what he's doing and allow him in that space in order for him to be responsible for himself. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing as well because mm. um, I tend to be a little bit of a control freak. So it's allowing him to have that control over himself, over his emotions, about what he needs and what he doesn't need. Now, do I get it right all the time? Certainly not, you know. And um, is it's like, and I can be very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, and I've got to watch that with myself too. You know, if it's if I'm frustrated and things like that, I have no no qualms in saying to the boys, I'm really frustrated right now. I've been on the phone with this bank for two hours. I've spoken to like eight people. I need quiet time. I say, I and I find myself saying that a lot at the moment as well, particularly last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's not being afraid to ask for it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and making them see where you're at, or, or even validating, because they can feel if you're frustrated, oh, but actually verbalizing it so they go, "Oh, how I feel about how you're feeling, and what you're saying is actually yes, that is the same thing." So I can start to trust my own feelings about other people and where other people are at as well. I think that's an awesome skill to develop too. Exactly, and then they're not taking on board as well as I'm frustrated with them. Yes they're realizing because kids tend to take on they, they tend to feel that because they're so egocentric they take on the world as oh they're angry at me or they're frustrated at me or whatever and that's a normal part of child development totally and so i think if they don't validate it they automatically think it's them anyway exactly they assume it's them yeah. they assume it's them so it's actually then going i am angry at this or i'm frustrated today because of now, you don't have to go in depth as to what it is. Yeah. Is it, it can just be there's a situation at work which I'm dealing with which has me very frustrated. I don't want to take it out on you right now. So I need quiet time. Mm. So there's that understanding of my mum's not upset with me but she's upset. She gets upset like me. That's okay. Mm. It's okay I get upset but it's also not okay I take it out on her. Mm. So see how that it's all that That's sort of stuff yeah, yeah 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 going on as well which is which is really cool but it's also it, it also get it forces me to be a better person mm. because I have to step up and go oh, what is actually going on for me right now as mm. well um and actually it's interesting is it's there's another thing <laughs> we've got another saying at the moment does that concern you I don't know if oh, anyone I've, I've got that one in my house too Right. I don't know if anyone's had this problem oh, Yes, um, where people stick their noses into mm. other things, particularly if they're trying to procrastinate and not do their work. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's, it's, um, it is, uh, my eldest is very big on that. Yeah, um, my, second, my youngest. Story. Yes, yes, yes. So if there's something going on, it's, it's like he wants to be involved because that's, yes, yeah. it, first of all, it's, it's, that'll distract him and it's like <laughs> that's the excuse for why it, it's not done. So we've got a big thing is going, does that concern you right now? Mm. Uh, but that's also used blanketly across the board. So is even if it's something that is involves him and not the other other one, I will say to the other one, does that concern oh, yes, you right now? Oh, absolutely. So making sure that that is 
it does happen both ways. It yeah. just happens more one way than the other. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But there'll be one. There'll be yeah. one in the, in the who's always in. Yeah. And it's just a thing. Does it concern you right now? And if, and, and, but also to what I'm very mindful of as well is sometimes I'll go, this doesn't concern you, but I would like your opinion on something else later on. Mm, okay. Yeah. So it's validating. It's not saying I don't want to hear you any of the time. It's just that this is this doesn't concern you, and yes. this isn't the right time. Yeah. Okay, that's a great one. Yeah. Or something that is there involved in say, look, this doesn't concern you, but I have got something that does concern you that I do want to talk to you about, but now's not the time. Yeah. And what I have to do with my elders, I have to say, would three o'clock work for you? <laughs> And he'll set his alarm for three o'clock. So, <laughs> and then at three o'clock, he'll go, right, so what was that thing you wanted to discuss with me? <laughs> so I've learned I have to write it down. Schedule them. Schedule them in. So with that, the kind of the younger child that is kind of the constant um, need for attention or support or yes. interruption, that type of thing, is that what you were talking about with, with going back to, you know, think of it like an office or like a team and that's what Absolutely. kind of tends to help you navigate that sort of situation? Yeah, and I think, well, for me, what I find is it helps de-emotionalise it. Mm. Um, it removes, you, yeah, it removes the emotion. Yeah, yeah, in an office, if there's going to be drama, right? There's going to be water cooler talk. There's going to be people working. There's going to be people not working. So essentially, I'm managing a team. Albeit it's a little people team, um, but I'm managing a team. So my role then is how do I bring out the best in them? How do I keep them focused? And but it, more importantly is how do I empower them to do what they need to do to keep the ship moving? So what I've found is seeing them as team members rather than necessarily my children, helps a lot more in how I process things with them as well. It also takes out a lot of frustration because you seem, well, I know myself, I'm more tolerant of my team members than what I necessarily are of my children at times, simply because it's the expectations that I put on, and they're the expectations that I put on them, not that they necessarily put on themselves. Mm. Gren and I do put those same expectations on my team members but I tend to be more gentle when I speak to them about that right so but that's more my my things as well so if I, I notice that's, that's fairly I think that would be fairly common you know like because we've also got all the kind of parent child triggers that happen as well Absolutely. you know there are children for a reason yeah. and you know, with our team members we're not well, you know sometimes you'll get people that that might trigger you but they're not necessarily the emotional triggers that you get from your own children. So I can imagine that, which I did actually play with this week. It's like yeah. if there's this, there's a team and not that I get much done at all, but like just changing that perception. Yep. And, you know, like one of mine is, you know, works fairly consistently, doesn't need yep. too much support. The other one needs constant. And I expect that. So if I start just expecting that, it just takes away all the, Hang on. Sorry yeah. about that. Eh, eh. I forgot to turn my phone off. Oh, I can't hear it. Let me just turn it off now. So if I expect that, can you still see me, by the way? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I uh, cancel. Um, hang on. <laughs> Technology. I did hear it buzz before and I was like, oh, I forgot to put my phone on mm -hmm. airplane mode. Mm. So if I expect that, then I'm not I'm not emotionally charged when it happens because exactly it's like I'm in this team and this is what happens. Yeah, and you know the strengths and you know your weaknesses are your team. You know, you know the strengths and you know your weaknesses are your children. It, is it's it's no different from working in a team. So you work to that, and the way you would in a team is it's also you encourage that. Like for example, is it's like um, you know is my eldest just wants to. At, you know, have fun and he's inventing stuff and went like old sports games and things like that. So, you know, during a break, is it's like, I mean, one of them, I sent him up, he set up a mini golf course in the lounge room, right? And then that became an activity the two of them could do. Right, so, yeah. you know, and it was one of those days that he just wasn't getting anything done. He just couldn't think, he couldn't focus, he couldn't do anything. I needed to get stuff done. 
So I just thought laterally and I just went, I need him out of my hair. I don't want to be nagging at him because if he continues to anyway, there, I will nag at him. So yeah. if I know that's what's going to happen is it's like, how do I change my perception or my thinking around this to get the outcome we need, mm. right? It might not necessarily be the tasks that we were expecting to get done, but sometimes there's a better way. So Ultimate flexibility of being a parent, right? Exactly, exactly. So in this case with my eldest, it's like I said, right, what I want you to do is that's it. It is There's no workbooks or anything at the moment. I just said, what I'd like you to do is you've got a choice of inventing two things. You need to invent a um, obstacle, an obstacle sports challenge, either in the backyard or in the lounge room. Where would you prefer to do it? In the lounge room. Okay. What do you think it could be? And he goes, a mini golf course. Great. Go for it. You've got one hour. Mm, yeah, right. So then right? he set his timer so he knows he's got one hour to complete this golf and he's focused on it. Yep. Yes. But I also made the commitment in one hour is your brother and I will both be down uh, and um, and who I work with in the office, all three of us will be downstairs and you will guide us through and we will have a game for half an hour. Oh, fun. Right? Yeah, great idea. So that completely broke up the energy. So it's kind of like it was a complete state changer. Yeah. He was happy because he was off doing his own thing. My other son was happy because it's like he had peace and quiet. You know, um, the, it was my, myself and my work colleague were ecstatic because we could actually <laughs> chat without being interfered. We could get done what we needed to get done. And then we had a break afterwards and we all had an absolute ball, right? And then afterwards, it's, it's like we went back upstairs, got it work done, he packed away. But then all of a sudden he came back upstairs and then continued his work without me having to ask. Because he felt validated in in a couple of things, and I learned a lot from that. In that he did, he worked on something that it was completely practical. So it could be something like with younger ones, Lego. Yeah, um, Lego works awesome for one of mine, like yeah. really beautifully. Yep, Lego. Um, I've also drawing, sent with my um, yeah drawing, coloring. But see, my two aren't drawing or coloring kids, so that kind of falls by the wayside. Um, as I got my other one, he I got is I've been keeping boxes and tubes and things like that. So they have to develop what you call um, three tier effects, you know, with dominoes. So they've got to put marbles down and you know do things and domino tippers and stuff like that. Um, setting up a game, so whether that be a game of um, you know Monopoly or Cluedo or you know you know is great with younger kids. You know works great for us. From preschool all the way up because it teaches colours, numbers, strategy, everything. Um, so you can get them to actually set up something mm. um, or it might even be cook cook something mm. or make something, not necessarily cook something, but, you know, put together some raw ingredients to make things for everybody and then they have to serve it on the table. So they're doing an activity that involves their hands, but then they have to present it. And they're using what the they're other doing. side of the brain, right? They're using the right Absolutely. side of their brain, which is more the creative, colourful, expansive yep. side rather than the really technical side. And I do find that with mine that, you know, if they can't click into that, if they can get creative, it, it I think it neurologically... It, it crosses actually, over. Yeah, it hooks up the hemispheres so you can start yep. to use them. It better. starts everything get firing. A bit dominant on one side, then we can't we can't keep going. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and also to the presentation afterward is really important Great because if, even if they're just pre- presenting that to a sibling or something else and explain, walking them through what they've done. Um, for example, I'll use the mini putt-putt courses. It's like, so when we went down is my eldest then went, right, so what I've designed here is I've designed this so it's like this one will be easy, this one will be more challenging and you've got to work out how that you're going to do this and da 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 So he actually had to articulate what he was trying to achieve to us. So if you actually think about it, like in a classroom environment, they've got to present to their peers all the time. They're not getting that opportunity during COVID time. I was so thinking about that just this morning. Could like, do that. Their news days that is not there. And I was thinking I really need to bring that back a little bit because mm-hmm. they don't have news days and presentation days. So yeah, that's a that's another way you could include yeah. that side of things too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Or gardening. 
gardening is mm. another thing that's really great um, or even them just digging a hole like it is it's like cooking or making some sort of food I mean there's so many recipes where people can make cookies or muesli bars that aren't don't involve cooking but then making they have to pasta. present it making pasta yeah. worked amazing for my elder of the two younger boys like yep. he would just sit and the kneading and the mixing with his hands and then the the process it amazed me it was a you know a three-year-old that could not concentrate for more than a few seconds was completely absorbed totally absorbed for an hour making pasta like I'd yeah. ha- I that's an activity I had to help him with at that age yes. but totally concentrating for an hour it amazed yep. me yep and then look at the end result everyone's got a meal yeah I know it's amazing how much time then has that saved you to then be able to work yeah yeah so is it's like I'm always constantly thinking the end game so mm-hmm. what is the end game the end game is, is that I'm also super organized and I know what I have to get through for the day and I'll strategize that. Now, look, more often than not, I end up working once the boys are asleep. It's just the nature of the beast, mm. right? It's been that way since they were babies. Uh, however, I think that's I'm my own worst enemy there because of just the enormity of the work that's involved. But saying that is I've had to get really savvy and this is where I just keep questioning myself as to what do I need to achieve, how do I do it and how do I best organise myself to do that? Um, For example, and I'll give you a classic example and this is something I really had to put in place when I started educating Finn, is I had to put in place when I was available on the phone. So Mm. I will only answer my phone or only make calls during certain windows. If my phone rings outside of that window, chances are I will not pick it up, right? I will not pick it up. I'll not pick it up for two reasons. One is it's like if I, I is, chances are if the phone rings, I'm on the phone for a long period of time because it's not a simple, simple phone call. Um, it enables me to focus on um, on the, the boys with their less, like with, well, with my eldest with his lesson. If I'm presenting a lesson, I don't want him to be resentful. Like he needs to, I've made it very clear to both my children is it's like, this is work time. This is family time. This is whatever. To the point of if the phone does ring and I need to take it, I go, this is a work call. I know it's outside of my normal call time. Is it okay okay that I take this now? Because I will extend our time later. Yes. They're fine. So the same way you're you're team. just you're totally present when you when you say you're going to be there and you need to do some work with him. You're totally present with him, yeah, and absolutely. it's not interrupted. And you're scheduling work time around that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And same with even my emails. Is my emails? I know I've got a certain time period to get through them, to get them done, to get them happening. I'm also kind on myself. I usually set more work to do than I could possibly do. So I've learned to go, if I get through 75% of my work, I've done a good job. So, so you, don't actually, you don't actually expect necessarily that you're going to get 100% of it done? No, yeah. no. I removed that pin a number of years ago mm. because I found that was killing me. Mm. Um, yeah, that was, do that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was Reading a breaking point for me. Yeah, it, it was my breaking point. And, and I've learned, I think I've gotten to understand what my capacity is so I know I'll always put on the extra, 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 extra. So I've learned to be kind to myself and go on, you know what, if I get it 75% done, I've had an awesome day, you know. And same, same with, um, you know, my eldest because I've got to do all his assessments and everything else. You know what, 75%, he's nailed it, you know. It is, it's, that's, that's a great job. And then he then can concentrate. And, I mean, say, and by having that, what's what's fascinated me has come out of that is then the things come through where he will get oh I think I've just swapped over mics can you still hear me yeah I can still hear you yep okay let's see if that works did that you hear me again now yep 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 great um so what we've worked out is he then interestingly will get he has gotten 100 percent on things hmm randomly randomly because is I've encouraged him to go you can do that but the world's not going to fall apart if you don't if that makes sense so he he knows there's a, a minimum bar that he had like what's what's fascinating what this has fascinated me with working with him because it's a little bit different 
with the ho- the home ed side because I am assessing and I've got to put in everything Department of Education and all that sort of stuff. But with him, I've gone all of his uh, online learning and everything else is he has to get a minimum of 70%. Otherwise, it resets. Yeah. Right? So he knows that. He knows that. And interestingly is you would think he would just get just over that, right? No, he'll push it. And then where he gets really good marks, then what he does is he takes on the extracurricular activity without me even having to say it, to then go into battle with Australia-wide and even globally. And it, it has floored me every time because it's been okay for him not to get it right, that then he wants to really get it right. Yeah. yeah. So that was a big learning curve for me to then implement that with my work too. To go oh, right. That's ah okay. Yeah, I can imagine. It's like if you don't have that, if you don't have that buffer, the the pressure is constantly. Yeah. And if you don't get the hundred percent, you've essentially failed. Exactly. You know what failing does to a lot of people's psyche, mm-hmm. and it certainly isn't helpful when you start beating beating yourself up around around it. But um, yeah. So if you give yourself that buffer, seventy five to a hundred percent, you you know you have to do a lot less than than what you were doing to actually fail and you can actually celebrate the little successes. And you can celebrate the achievements more yeah. and you can recognise then, and for me, not getting it right all the time, then I can look at going, okay, well, how can I improve that? What can I do different? How can I do yeah. it? So it's a whole different, again, it comes to that perception, right? Absolutely. It's a whole different perception on how do I approach this rather than going beating myself up going, I'm getting nowhere. Mm. I can't do it. It's overwhelming. It is otherwise it get that's that's where the overwhelm comes in is you're not coping you're not getting what you needed to get done you're not achieving you're not getting your your deadlines met yeah that's how I felt a little bit last week I felt like yeah. there was just so much work and the kids were for whatever reason just not All very focused last, last week and I just felt like I just I couldn't I wasn't getting anything done and I just couldn't yeah. even get the work done. And then I was catching up on a couple of days that I was working as well. And it was just like, oh my God. Yeah. And, and this is where we, we had a chat about it too, is it's like, you've got to do the, what's right by you and your mm. family. Yeah. You know, is, is for some people, I mean, it, for me, it was, it was the flip it, um, with Finn when I started home education with him, right? Is that was, it, is it, it, it had such a stigma attached to it Mm. which took me so long but not all things suit all people or Mm. all families or all the time all the time yeah right so in COVID times you've got to do what's right for you and your family Mm. and that's the most important important thing so for some of us is it is getting our kids back to school more often Mm. because that's the only way we can have sanity. They can have sanity, we can have sanity and get done what we need to get done. And that's okay. Mm. That is absolutely okay. And I think anybody who's working right now, that I'm so grateful, that is an option here in Australia. Yeah, oh, totally. Right? Yeah. It's an option there here in Australia. Is, you know, I have heard some like some really, ne- some parents are having some really negative judgments around that, even someone who was heard through someone else, someone, a uh, single mother, Two, mm. two kids working at um, at Woolworths, and so we're sending her kids to school when she was working. But the school wouldn't Brilliant. refusing to take the kids because she was considered not essential working. And and I'm like, of course she's essential she, worker, absolutely. Because she's got to provide for her two kids, and she's working for something that's open for essential workers. So, I mean, the the supermarket just wrote her a letter so for yeah. the school to take them. Cool. But I was like, that's just that's not very fair imagine that poor woman trying to cope with yeah working and and providing for her kids and then the the school being not so friendly about it yeah and and I think that's you know is you've really nailed it there it's it's where no one's in any position to judge absolutely no one no one every situation is so different you know and I think absolutely in this time the other thing that and it's not only related to this, it's, I think it's related to people's mm. boundaries and where people are at with, mm. with re-socialising and social distancing. It's, it's actually respecting where other people are at. 
Exactly. And there's no right and wrong. There just isn't. No. And, you know, so for example, my my mum has been, you know, very strict and my auntie have been very strict with their their own personal mm. social distancing. And she, they found it really hard with missing the, the younger grandkids and all that okay. kind of stuff. And I've just said to her, whenever you're ready, you know, like yep. I'm totally respecting when you're ready. I yep. know you want to see them. When you're ready, they'll be there, you know. Yep. And, and yes, and they both feel guilty because they're like, we could be helping you and we, I could be helping with the homeschooling. And I'm like, don't worry no. about it. When you're, when you're ready. And, and, you know, this, I see stuff about people judging, you know, whether people go out and whether they exercise and whether they do this or that. And it's just like, you know, as, I think as long as people are being reason, respectful of other people, Exactly. You have to work out what works for you. Exactly. Exactly. It's about respecting yourself and others and judgment, throw judgment out the window. Absolutely. Like seriously is, is, and I mean, this is the thing, and this is why schools have remained open is it's the prime minister himself said essential workers are all those who have a job right now. Mm, all those who have a job. The reason why they're essential is to keep the economy going. Okay. So, and I mean, as a, a single parent, it's not an easy job. I mean, far Dal's away more than he's home. And it, so it's been challenging. I get to a certain point, the challenges involved with single parenting, mm, right? Oh, totally. I, I get that. I have so much respect, so much respect. And out of anybody else in this, they're the ones that need support, mm, absolutely. right? Need, need as much support as what our elderly do. So if in order for them to get to work or even to just breathe, they can send their kids to one day, two days a week, that's perfect yeah, because totally. that's what works for them. Exactly. You know? And same way as also, we... It's that whole principle of, of, you know, you supplying your own you supplying your own oxygen first. If you're not at your best, your, your kids can't be at their best. And so the ha- whole family unit starts to get disruptive. So... You know, exactly. like particularly, I think the whole mother kind of archetype is yep. the traditional thing of like everyone else comes before you. It just mm. can't happen during this time. Like you have to keep that balance and that maintenance of you making sure you're okay and finding the balance of what makes you okay. So everybody else in your family is okay as well. Exactly. And, you know, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. You have to look after yourself and your family. And, you know, what's interesting is during COVID times, the suicide rate is higher than what the killing of COVID is. Oh, yeah. In Australia. I mean, that, totally. I hadn't actually thought of that, but that absolutely that would make sense. So the best way in which we can protect ourselves from COVID is actually supporting each other in what we need to do. Yeah. And it's being okay. So if someone needs to send people to kids to school, that's okay. Yeah. You know, if you want to keep them at home, that's okay. okay. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and the other reason why the schools have remained open as well is so we can protect, okay. uh, you know, at like, and also to the mature members of our family as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they are classified as our most vulnerable. The government has just made announcements that they're getting stricter with more mature members of our society, and rightly so, after some recent things that have happened. So, is it's it, the traditional role of a grandparent supporting up, like supporting their children with looking after the grandkids after school or picking them up after school or running them off to dance or helping you with um, COVID teaching. It, it's gone. Yeah. It's the world's changed. Yeah. It's changed. Yeah. So their connection is through Zoom. But I, I just had thought, you know, a, a way in which it possibly could, they could be engaged is um, I, I, this, is, this is something I've done with my eldest is he does food tech. So with his grandma, we've set up a Zoom food tech. So they cook together. Oh, that's a great over idea. Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Right. And she actually go, walks through so his she's theory still with him. Part, she's still part of the curriculum. You're just doing Absolutely. Zoom. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So yeah. can you see, so this works really well because this actually gives me a couple of hours. Like, I mean, granted, it, it would be a lesson that I'd spend one or two hours on. She spends four or five on. But that's mm-hmm. a luxury of a grandparent. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So I think this is actually, I, I just thought of this talking to you because of, because uh, I'm familiar with your situation as well, is um, to engage if you have got a really challenging younger one and you need that break in your work or what have you, Zoom the grandparent 
and get the grandparent to talk them through what they need to do. That's a great idea. And they would actually love that because then they're still involved and they don't feel like a bit redundant and useless themselves. So yeah, that's a really beautiful idea. Absolutely. And then they could say, okay, it looks like you need a break, you know, little Jimmy, go off and go to the toilet and I'll, I'm going to get myself a cup of tea and I'll see you back here in five minutes. Yeah. You know? And then they're like, are you there? Are you there? <laughs> you know, like it is, it's, you can do that. And it's, yeah. um, what's the other one? Let, uh, me, uh, uh, where's, 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 where, where's up or something like, cause I know Zoom. Oh, uh, WhatsApp? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you've got other ones for the grandparents to use if they yeah. you, if they haven't got the longer Zoom one. Yeah. Um, you know, you could use FaceTime. Yeah. Um, with them, um, where uh, where 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 be? I think it's whereby. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's another there's another one that doesn't have a time limit as well. Okay. But it's it, it is there's lots of ways in which like I mean that's I just thought of that. So, so it is a smaller sport. It's what yeah. works, and it's not necessarily going to be an all day thing. Yeah. But it's sort of like if you need to give spe- specific attention to one of your children, you need the other one occupied. Like say if you've got two little, like a, two, a kindy and a year one kid, I mean, that would be crazy or two kindy kids or what have you, is it's like what you could do is allocate one to one grandparent, one to another grandparent on Zoom, and you can get some of your work done, then cross them over or what have you. So mm. it's time to think outside the box mm. and also, too, in that way, because I know that way, this way, engaging um, my eldest grand, well, is the boys' grandparents, is they feel very actively involved in what's mm. going on now, and, they're not, and they're not missing out, not missing out at all. They don't feel guilty. They feel like they're really being proactive with it, and they're more engaged in what's going on and mm. more understanding. Because also, too, is then my kids are then saying to their grandparents as well, "It's okay. We'll see you once all this is over." Mm, yeah. Isn't it great we can do this? Absolutely. Yeah. You know? I think that's a really wonderful place to to finish this conversation yeah. and think of it like a smorgasbord. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful analogy. And also like that there are so many options out there. Um, mm. Would you be able to just give a quick summary of how people can reach you and, um, you know, like on on Facebook and, and websites and all that kind of stuff if they want to be able to connect with you or see what your your business does? Yeah, sure. Um, just go, uh, Google Business Blueprint mm-hmm. um, and Business Blueprint, the team will be able to put you in touch uh, with me there. Um, also too, I'd use Facebook Messenger rather than Facebook it, itself. Uh, so just look for Catherine Beaumont. Uh, but any any if you're getting in touch with Business Blueprint, the team will be able to put you in touch with you there. Great. Well, I'll put all your details on on the show notes as well. Thank you so much for your chat today. It's been wonderful talking to you. I love a good chat with you. And I just think that those ideas are just going to be so helpful for parents just navigating this, the schooling and work and everything. So it's been really wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, look, my pleasure. It's always, I, I, I love talking to you. You know that. <laughs> just can't wait for us to actually have a proper coffee in a cafe again soon. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, I think that the biggest takeaway, I mean, the biggest thing I've learned is it's, I don't always get it right, but I kind of throw myself in there and I don't take it's myself too seriously. Yeah. You know, have a good laugh. Because if you're crying now, if it's, if it's going to be a good dinner party later on and you're going to be laughing at it or bringing it up at their 21st, why not laugh now? Exactly. Thank you, Catherine. All right. Thanks, Sarah. If you loved or learnt something in this episode, share it. And don't forget to subscribe. I look forward to bringing you next week's Awakening Conversation. Have a wonderful week.